In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Aloysius Church. Glasgow and the west of Scotland and much of the British Isles are covered in snow. In many ways a great gift, a, great, a gift of beauty, although it can make life rather difficult and dangerous at times. We place our hearts before God and we ask the Spirit of God to be with us. And perhaps in particular we think of St. Paul who in his letter today, we have a fragment of the letter to the Corinthians, where he talks about adapting himself to be all things to all people, conscious that as a human being he can uh, alienate people. So he tries to adapt so that he can in some ways be present to them and not repel them and that they can listen to the message that he is trying to bring. In our own lives perhaps we're not as flexible as Paul tried to be. We try in some ways to anger some people. We repel others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. We ask the Lord's Holy Spirit to allow us to be more flexible to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now listen to our readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a person's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. That person must be taken to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The person is leprous. They are unclean. The priest must declare them unclean. They are suffering from leprosy of the head. A person infected with leprosy must wear their clothing torn and their hair disordered. They must shield their upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, they must be unclean, and therefore they must live apart, they must live outside the camp. The Word of the Lord. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Happy the one whose offense is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. O oh, happy the person to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are my refuge, O oh Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. But now I have acknowledged my sins, my guilt I did not hide. 
I said, I will confess my offense to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Exalt you just. O come, ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks or to the Church of God. Just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else, so that they may be saved. Take me for your model, as I take Christ. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia. 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 May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our minds so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said be cured and the leprosy left him at once and he was cured Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him mind you say nothing to anyone but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering of your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery the man went away but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I always find a personal involvement in this particular gospel. The um, description of Jesus and the lepers and the description that you will find in the scriptures about leprosy would include uh, my own disease which is psoriasis. If I had been in Old Testament or even in New Testament times, uh, the word leprosy, as it was applied in the Old and the New Testament, uh, covered, in fact, all kinds of skin disease, whether it would be ringworm or eczema or any of those. Often they wouldn't have names for them. They would just notice that these things were happening. And on a physical level, if you can... Uh, take yourself back to a community that at one point was semi-nomadic and then in kind of uh, in very close-knit communities 
people who did have any form of skin disease, it could be the death of the entire tribe. Um, because it could, with everybody in so such close proximity to each other, um, something quite infectious could quickly go through the tribe. So what we find is leprosy is a term uh, which is applied very generally. And so a psoriasis where the skin scales uh, are there, nobody would really understand it. And so you would be taken under the umbrella. What we would see today scientifically as leprosy, uh, which is now Hansen's disease after the Norwegian who discovered the, the bacteria that was the cause of it, probably really didn't come into the Middle East until after the time of Alexander the Great where the troops came back and then it becomes more frequent. So many of the mentions in Old Testament on Leviticus times probably don't refer to the Hansen's disease that we would know of the deformation of bones and limbs, the Hansen's disease which led to the leprosies of medieval Europe and where leprosy was a tremendous scourge because of that particular disease. But when we are listening to Leviticus, they are on using this as a very general term. And in one way, it's what we find in the Old Testament and such things as Leviticus, uh, the cutting edge of medical knowledge at that time, trying to protect the tribe, trying to see healing, trying to see whether who makes decisions on whether somebody is free of a particular disease. And so we see it marked out. It's perhaps educational to think that over the last year, we've almost gone fast forward through 4,000 years of history. We talk of leprosy here. We talk with a kind of a rather a great knowledge of these things which the people of Old Testament and New Testament times have no knowledge of. And when we look at the COVID from the first um, inclinations that something fairly nasty was happening to where we are today, we've gone through all of those, the fears of the community, the fears of individuals, the generosity of some, the selfishness of others, all of those different things which we will see in Old Testament and New Testament times and even modern history times to do with any form of illness because illness threatens our lives, threatens our well-being. In Jesus' time, those people who would be declared as, as lepers, some of them with Hansen's disease, others, other types of disease, would have been um, rather harshly treated. The lepers at Jesus' time would have been out of community, they wouldn't be allowed to be in a town or a village. They must live outside, they must dress to show that they have disease of some form. It must be very clear. And so lepers were the bottom of the pecking order of all beggars. And anybody who was a leper who was seen coming close to town, people would warn them off and then start to throw stones at them to get them to move away. Very violent. And unless somebody in the family was taking pity on you and lived in the village and hopefully they would come and they would put food on a stone outside the village and then they would withdraw and then you could come and then you could get your food. So it was a very precarious existence to be a leper. The theological point that Mark is making today as well as all the other things about acceptance and fear and all of those things that are there, the people on the margins of the society, um, the theological point is a very deep one and an important one for us. It's that Jesus um, moved totally against what were the expected norms of his time of how he related to the outsider, how he related to the person who was diseased in body and mind and spirit. Because the lepers of their time were seen to be probably people who were suffering because their souls were reflected in their body. God had inflicted these things because there was something nasty that was inside them. And so the people took this. Jesus goes totally counter to that. We see through the New Testament 
that when he's coming across lepers, often he will physically touch them, which is making him ritually unclean for the Jews. But Jesus is making that very point. He's actually physically touching them. The irony for Mark is that at the end of the story, the roles are reversed. The man is cured and he's accepted back into the society. It is Jesus now who must live on the edges of the society, not able to go because of the people searching for him. It's a small lesson for each of us. If in some ways we, like Jesus, are trying to cure our world, not necessarily physically, it may be that, but spiritually and psychologically. If we are trying to be healers, bringing salvation, bringing redemption as apostles of Christ should be in our broken world, then it will lead to our alienation. As Christ touched the leper, healed the leper, and the roles were reversed, so likewise, anybody who is trying to bring good into the world will be uh, thrown to the edges of society. Anybody who is trying to bring love will be harmed, as we see in the general scope of Jesus' life. So we pray. We pray asking God to give us insights into the ways that we have acted during this pandemic. Have we been fearful? Have we been courageous? Have we been generous? Have we been selfish? And in one way, just asking the Lord to help us to be able to respond and learn from the experiences uh, that we have had, but to put that into practice in our healing of the broken world, which is continuing to be broken. For these graces, we ask the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we have. And so let us pray that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, may this offering cleanse and renew us and make it become, for those who do your will, the source of eternal salvation. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's lift up our hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal human beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us the remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through Christ, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. And may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with our bishops here in Scotland, with the clergy, and with all the men, women, and children who bring your good news into our world. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph and the Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the disciples, we pray with Jesus as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all needless distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. We pray for peace at this particular part of the Mass, and so maybe let us just reflect back and pray for the broken world in which we live and we pray for all of those who are seeking peace. We ask in particular for those who are suffering rather quietly in refugee camps across the world. Often when the war zone becomes quiet, the cameras go away 
but thousands upon thousands of women, children, vulnerable, voiceless people uh, live on the edge of poverty and life and death. So maybe let us just pause for a moment. And if there's a particular part of the world, it could be Central America, it could be the Middle East, it could be Asia. And maybe just to think of one group of people and just to call them to mind. And if at home you know the peace prayer, please feel free to join me as I say. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And so, let us pray. Lord, having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray that we may always long for that eternal food, 
by which we truly live. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just to one parish announcement, and uh, this being the sixth Sunday of the year, this particular year, we now enter into the Lenten period in the middle of this week. So this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday and the beginning of the, the Lenten preparation towards Easter. And so although the, we won't be having a broadcast Mass that day, we hope to have a small reflection. So if you'd like to go to the website, you may find just that as a reflection for our Ash Wednesday and our beginning of Lent. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.